in today's video i wanted to document the process of creating ceramics at home and in the studio right from starting out with your wet clay to hand building some really cool stuff firing it twice and then of course i'll show you my final pieces I'm preparing my surface which is a nice thick canvas cloth and I also have some basic tools and I'm going to be using two different clays. They're both stoneware clay so they fire at pretty high temperatures. One of them will fire to a white color while one of them is like a dark coffee brown kind of shade. Now the first thing I'm doing here is just kneading and wedging my clay. These are some really important steps that you need to start with just to make sure that your clay is really even and that it doesn't have any air bubbles inside because air bubbles are absolutely the bane of any potter's existence. If your piece has an air bubble inside it may be so tiny but it will ultimately explode in the kiln so you absolutely want to avoid air bubbles. Every piece you see in this video is going to be hand built by me meaning I'm not using a pottery wheel for anything. There are a few different methods of hand building and the one that I'm employing here is slab building wherein you kind of roll out a slab of clay with a wooden rolling pin and I'm also making sure to eliminate any air bubbles. Half of pottery is just being sure that you don't have any air bubbles because that can lead to cracks and explosions. Try to roll it into an even thickness and then you can just kind of cut out stuff from it and you can actually build some really complex things via this technique but what I'm doing is just really simple. When working with ceramics, water and sponge are just some of your most useful versatile tools and here I am dipping my finger in water and just using that to refine the sharp edges, just soften and smooth them out a little bit. taking some more clay and here I plan to kind of sculpt some small pieces. The sculptures that I'm making are going to be solid clay and this is actually never recommended because the chance of an air bubble in solid clay is so high that you're supposed to hollow things out but you know I decided to go for it and just build something out of a block of clay. I wanted to build a little house inspired by my ancestral home in Goa and you'll have to wait till the end to see the results. And now it's time to hand build a few mugs. I was fascinated by pinch mugs that I saw online and I didn't really learn pinch technique in my class but I did watch some videos online so I just decided to kind of give it a go and it may look really easy but it is also a little bit challenging you have to pinch in a very purposeful manner and it's so easy to mess things up so here I thinned the walls too much and you really can't undo a pinch when you've done it so this was a big fail but I kept this in to show you guys my mistake I just kind of re-wedged it and decided to try again. My second time was significantly more successful 
and I'm happy with that result. This is basically everything I built in a couple of hours and once it has dried ever so slightly I decided to do some decorating and when it came to the mug I decided to just kind of add a small phrase to the bottom because I had some plans about how I would decorate it and here I am building a handle for the mug this is something you must always do when your mug is a little bit dry so I kept trying to find the ideal shape and I'm slipping and scoring and attaching the handle the handle is basically built using coil technique and I rolled out two mini coils which I'm just kind of using to reinforce the handle to the mug body so that the joint is nice and strong. I'm just adding some etchings to the house to kind of decorate it and then placing everything carefully to dry on brown paper for a few days and now on to day two of hand building this time i'm using the white clay i'm gonna try to make another pinch mug but i'm using a hybrid technique this time i'm not just pinching so i'm starting with the pinch vessel and then i'm going to use a little bit of the coil technique to lengthen the vessel so this adds some time to your hand building but it can also give you a little bit more control so if you don't want to start with like you know a big block of clay and pinch it then you could try mixing the pinch and coil technique i'm just starting out so i really just wanted to try different things and see what works for me when adding new coils, make sure to slip and score and then merge each coil so that it doesn't form any cracks and it's joined properly. Once I made the mug, I decided to sculpt another mini house, just like the one I did with brown clay. And now I'm just sculpting a couple of cat heads inspired by two of my cats. I love plants so I decided to kind of bring some of that into my pottery as well by taking a leaf from one of my plants and doing a leaf impression into a slab of clay. I just filmed one of these but I tried it with quite a few different leaves and it was a whole lot of fun. Now for this next step, it's recommended you wait at least a couple of weeks until all of your pieces are bone dry and when they're bone dry, you'll see the color has changed, it's turned a lot lighter. Most of the pieces have shrunk a little bit, they shrink by around 10% and pieces are very very brittle at this stage so you need to be very careful. And what we're doing today is sponging, that's why I'm wearing a mask. The clay is now dry so when you sponge it you are going to create clay dust and it's not very good if you inhale that stuff. So make sure to take the proper precautions. I also opened the window and I am just sponging using a slightly damp sponge. 
so that dust is contained and you can kind of see the before and after how the edges are really refined by doing this step now this is a very exciting day i packed up my pieces carefully and took them to a pottery studio and the reason we are doing that is because ceramics need to be fired at very high temperatures and most people don't have kilns at home they are dangerous they are expensive so we go to a pottery studio to get our stuff fired and it has to be fired twice these are the pieces after their first firing it's called a bisque firing look how light everything is this is brown clay and it looks peach so i did get some cracks and chips which is normal like you'll take all the precaution possible but usually every piece won't survive you will definitely have to throw out some stuff so i'm just checking all of the pieces that made it and i'm sponging them once again to take out any loose dust and prepare them for the next steps where i'm going to be using under glaze and glaze to decorate them and also give them that beautiful shine that we are used to with ceramics so i'm going to start with glazing these mugs i am using this wide haki brush made of natural fibers and slathering on a really thick coat you cannot apply glaze thinly it's not going to do you any good you need to do multiple thick coats and make sure the surface is well covered except for the bottom you cannot glaze the bottom of any ceramic piece really and now for these next bits of decoration i am using some under glazes with under glaze you can generally be a little bit more creative and you can do some finer decorating with more details After I was done glazing all of the pieces, I'm just taking sponge and clean water and sponging the edges as well as the bottom because you cannot glaze any part that's going to come in direct contact with the kiln shelf and when you are firing pieces with glaze on them, they also cannot touch because glaze is essentially similar to molten glass. If the glaze touches the shelf then your piece is going to fuse with the shelf and if your pieces are also touching each other they are likely to fuse together so these are some more nightmares that you want to try your best to prevent these are how the pieces look after i'm done with glazing them but they will change significantly once the final firing is done this chalky whitish green glaze is actually going to be a shiny transparent glaze after it's fired so i left the things to go into the kiln and i brought some of the other pieces home uh, to decorate with under glaze then tiny was very excited with the little cat pieces she wanted to sniff and hit them under glaze ended up being one of the most expensive parts of all of this you need to apply three coats in the same place if you want it to be opaque after firing so here i just made this little gingerbread man and he's probably going to be a christmas tree ornament Even after applying the three coats of black underglaze on these cats, you can kind of see that it looks really dull. But you don't have to worry about that because I am going to apply a coat of transparent glaze over all of this. And once it's fired, the true color and vibrancy should definitely show through. So 
here's everything that I have now fully fired. This is about four months since I started working on all these things. It feels really gratifying to have the end results in front of me and a few things broke along the way. I made a few things more. Uh, so this is just like a random mixed bag and I'm just going to go over some of these things in a little bit more detail starting with uh, the dark brown clay. This clay really left me pretty confused. If you saw it after the bisque fire, it had turned so light that I did not know what it would look like once it was fired finally. But after the second firing, it did become really really dark again. So you can see the daisies I painted on aren't fully opaque even though I used three coats. But I'm actually fairly satisfied with this and the inside of the mug says fresh as a daisy this little rainbow wall hanging thing i'm a little bit disappointed because i put three different colors of under glaze but i think putting the glaze on top completely sort of um obliterated the colors you can barely see it so that kind of sucks also this leaf platter i had added some color on the outside but you can't really see it because of the clay and glaze combination it's all really dark but I did find that I really like this dark brown clay unglazed. I think it looks so beautiful. So here you can see a little knot that I made with the white clay and the brown clay together. And I didn't add any kind of color or glaze on it. I really love how this turned out. You can hear that both of the pieces are still sort of separate which I love. But they're also in a knot and you can't fully separate them. If you look at this little gingerbread man. I didn't actually put any glaze on it. I left the clay raw and I just added some color. I also really love this so I feel like I would love to experiment with this dark colored clay or with minimal use of glaze just colors like this because it comes out so nice. These are also little flowers where I've only kind of glazed the center and I love how they turned out. These are wall flowers. I'm going to add some macrame cord and list these on my shop studio bahia these are a couple of wallflowers that are ready and like finished this one has jute fiber and the center glazed this one has macrame cord and the petals are glazed but the center is raw here are a lot of different white clay flowers where i've added some glaze in some places but i've left a lot of raw clay this is pink glaze with the center left raw here I've added glaze or under glaze in the center and the petals are left raw. But these two pieces, there are like combo of glazes for the petals and center also. I'm listing all of these as wall flowers on my shop because I just think these are the most adorable little pieces that would look so good in your home or your space. Now let's take a look at the four mugs. I was really excited about this but my results have not been so great. This was the mug I was most excited about and I think it's the one that got the most messed up. If you look at the glaze on the outside, it has this crackle texture that's usually highly sought after. But there's a lot of bubbling on the glaze and I'm not sure why that happened. It could be three or four different reasons. Maybe the glaze was not so good. Maybe I layered it on a little too thick. Or maybe the kiln fired a little higher temperature than it was supposed to. But there's a lot of bubbles on the inside also. And I'm not sure if any of these mugs are actually fine to be drunk out of. Because if you add liquid on them and you kind of see... Uh, any bubbling or anything then they are not food safe so i'm just going to use them around the house i actually made this one simple white mug as a gift for a friend i decorated it exactly as she would like and i put this little love inscription here i'm so disappointed she's not going to be able to drink out of it but hopefully she will just like this as an object in her home these two mugs are actually very special i made these as a matching combo and if you see um this one has a moon on the inside and it says fly me to the moon and this one has a star it says let me play among the stars and this is from a famous old jazz song i really like the song and that's why i put like the lyrics inside but again i do not think that these mugs are safe to drink out of couple of small things with white clay and i use this really nice sprinkle under glaze for these pieces on this star and moon there's no glaze it's just under glaze so it has a little bit of a more matte finish with this slightest bit of shine and the sprinkles are more defined 
here since I added glaze on top there's a lot more shine there is that little crackle texture uh, but the sprinkles have sort of run a little bit both of these pieces though will be available on Studio Bahia in my first ceramic drop floral agarbatti or incense stick holder also very adorable this is also something I'm listing a leaf plate turned out really nice Another raw white clay piece, meaning I added some under glaze, this smile, but I didn't really glaze it. No shine and I really like how it turned out. I want to experiment with more raw clay pieces, wherein, you know, I add color, but I don't glaze it. And that is possible when you're making decorative pieces that you're not going to eat out of. But if you are making a functional wear that you will be eating out of, then glaze is a necessity. Here's my small little clay home. I did not finish the white piece. I still have it, but I added uh, some color and then I glazed this piece. We got one subtle crack at the back here. A small flower with just sprinkle under glaze. And I think I'll make like a small fridge magnet or something. Here is another like clay charm that you can hang anywhere. And this just has an affirmation on it. It says you are enough. This turned out perfect. This is a little soap dish that I built and after many years of using shower gel i'm moving back to soap bars and even thinking of trying shampoo bars and it's actually a footed dish it will help with water drainage i made it with three legs because i remember reading that if you make anything with three legs it can never wobble so a lot of cat themed stuff so i made this like wall hanging with paw impressions for all four of my cats and I'm really happy that all four of the pieces survived perfectly. This is very special and I've saved my sentimental favorites for last. I made a lot of uh, little miniature cats inspired by my own two cats Thelma and Honey. So here's Thelma and here's Honey. I kind of tried to really replicate how my cats look and I think I did an okay job. I kept on checking them for like color placement and stuff. Thelma again, I wanted to do like a cat loaf figurine. If you ever had a cat or been around them, you know they love to sit in this loaf position. I even have a picture of Thelma sitting like this just after a bath. I like these minimal cat shapes, they're just sort of cones. Here's Thelma and small, they look so cute. I really enjoyed making this whole collection. It was satisfying, it was heartbreaking at times. I learned a lot. I'm definitely going to continue working with clay. And now you have a little bit more insight into all of the steps that go into making ceramic pieces. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.